Welcome back to the Respiratory Chain Playlist. In the last video, we looked at the mechanism of ubiquinol cytochrome C oxidoreductase, which was also uh, more commonly known as complex 3 of the mitochondria. So that's complex 3, cytochrome C ubiquinol oxidoreductase. And we saw that in that reaction, it required a protein that exists mostly in the inner membrane space. It's the only soluble protein of the respiratory chain. It's called cytochrome C. Okay, so this particular protein is a soluble protein, and it's going to pick up electrons from complex three, which is cytochrome C ubiquinol oxidoreductase, and it's gonna transfer electrons one at a time to cytochrome C oxidase. And this particular protein exists in the inner membrane space of the mitochondria okay and what we're actually going to do in this video for the most part is look at the synthesis of cytochrome c okay but just some important things to understand about it is that uh well, why is it called cytochrome c well the, the the term cytochrome usually implies that it has a heme prosthetic group okay and the c here actually implies that the type of heme that we're looking at is heme c Okay, so let me scroll down for just a second and you can kind of see the general setup of what cytochrome C will look like in the end. Okay, once we've attached the heme to it. So what you can see right here is right here, you can see one of the cysteine residues in the active site. And over here, you can also see another cysteine residue. Over here, this residue that's sort of going to chelate the iron three plus in there from the axial position, this is of course, a histidine residue okay in fact for cytochrome C there's a conserved sequence of amino acids that's required for binding the heme prosthetic group and it's the CXXCH which just means that the first residue is a cysteine the next two are variable depending on the, the species and then the next two are cysteine and histidine okay and you can sort of see the arrangement of those amino acids right here but what I want you to notice is this is that essentially what happened is, notice we, we sort of had these vinyl groups right here, but then we got a cysteine residue from cytochrome C that now is added onto these vinyl groups. So this was also a vinyl group right here. And now what we have essentially is another cysteine that's sort of been added onto there. And actually what we're gonna do right now is we're actually gonna look at the mechanism of the enzyme that actually attaches those cysteine residues onto the vinyl groups. Okay, and this is not a spontaneous reaction. It's not something that just automatically happens without an enzyme. It requires an enzyme. And the enzyme that's going to attach the cysteine residues of cytochrome C onto the heme are going to, is going to be hollow cytochrome C synthase. Hollow cytochrome C synthase. Now notice something. Whenever you have these thiol linkages to cytochrome C here on the heme moiety, you call it heme C. Okay, so this as a whole right now is called heme C. It's the actual physical prosthetic group to cytochrome C when you have these sort of thiol linkages right here to what were the vinyl groups. But notice that the actual substrate for this reaction is actually heme B, okay? So you have to have heme B to do this reaction, okay? And in the process, it'll get transformed into heme C, okay? Now, whenever we make whenever we make heme, we always make it in the ferrous state, okay? So when it starts out in the two plus oxidation state, this is called the ferrous state of iron, when it's in the two plus oxidation state, okay? Now, what can happen is, even when the iron is chelated by all these nitrogens of the pyrroles, of the heme moiety or the protoporphyrin 9 moiety, this iron can react with molecular oxygen. And so it can end up happening is an electron can get transferred from the iron 2 plus and it can end up reducing molecular oxygen into this molecule right here, which is called superoxide. And this, this is a non-enzymatic process. So the process is going from ferrous iron into this state, which is ferric iron. That's a spontaneous process, meaning it happens non-enzymatically. And whenever you do this oxidation of iron 2 plus into 3 plus, you're essentially going from ferroheme to ferriheme. Okay, the I designates that it's from the ferric iron. The ferroheme designates it's from the ferrous iron. 
O for O, I for I. So this process of going from ferrohem to ferrihem is spontaneous, happens non-enzymatically when this particular iron reacts with molecular oxygen. And in fact, this process occurs to a very large extent because whenever the heme is without a globin moiety on it protecting the iron itself it is prone to becoming oxidized by molecular oxygen so in this case molecular oxygen is acting as the oxidizing agent in the process to get re gets reduced to superoxide and the iron 2 plus is acting as the reducing agent in the process it gets oxidized into the ferric state so it's actually going to be in the ferric iron state the ferriheme that we're actually going to use hollow cytochrome C synthase okay so again just to just for you to bear this in mind is that the product is going to be a heme C in which the heme is now covalently attached to cytochrome C it's actually physically covalently attached but the substrates heme B as shown right here so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the mechanism of how this occurs and it's basically going to occur in two two steps it's going to occur in what we call nucleophilic addition reactions. So these are what we call nucleophilic, nucleophilic alkene additions. Alkene additions. So you're probably used to seeing this from your freshman or sophomore organic chemistry. And these are just simple addition reactions to alkenes. So I'll do the mechanistic steps in green. So it's essentially going to happen in sort of a concerted process is Number one, this double bond right here, these pi electrons are going to come out and abstract this proton from the thiol of cytochrome C cysteine residue, causing nucleophilic attack on the vinyl carbon as shown right here. Then you could imagine the same thing is going to happen for the other cysteine residue, and that's what's going to happen. The pi electrons here from the vinyl group are going to come out and abstract the proton, and in a concerted process, these electrons come and attack this carbon right here and right there and so now what you get at the end of this mechanistic step is you get what is referred to as hollow cytochrome c okay so you get hollow cytochrome c and what hollow cytochrome c essentially is is it's now what you have you have these 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 conserved cysteine residues here that are now covalently attached to what were the vinyl groups of heme B. And whenever you have this arrangement where the thiols are now attached at these positions, you call it heme C. You call it heme C, and the C designates that it's cytochrome C. Okay? And it's actually very important that this iron be in the 3 plus state, because remember back to the last video when we looked at cytochrome C ubiquinol oxidoreductase. What's going to happen? Well, one electron is going to be donated to the iron 3 plus. And so you can imagine that what's going to happen is one electron is going to be donated from complex 3 into cytochrome C. And so that's going to basically going to take that iron and it's going to reduce it into the 2 plus oxidation state. Okay, and then what's going to happen is cytochrome C, which is this guy right here, this is cytochrome C, is going to donate one electron into an enzyme called cytochrome C oxidase, which we'll look at in the next video, and it's going to be reoxidized back to the iron 3 plus state, therefore the name cytochrome C oxidase. Okay. So hopefully this video gave you a little bit of intuition on how cytochrome C works, the mechanism of hollow cytochrome C synthase, and just keep in mind that the overall purpose of this particular protein, which is soluble and exists in the inner membrane space, is to transfer electrons from complex 3 into complex 4. And another way of saying that is it's transferring electrons one at a time, so one electron at a time, from cytochrome C ubiquinol oxidoreductase to cytochrome C oxidase. If you can remember that and that it transfers electrons one at a time, you should be good on any exam. So hopefully this video gave you a little bit of help with cytochrome C. See you in the next video.